Hi, and welcome to another tip on how to use Adobe Photoshop for video. I'm your host, Rich Harrington, and this week it's a quick one. Now, many of you are users of both Photoshop and After Effects, and if you're like me, you'll start your designs in Photoshop, often taking advantage of layer styles for things like drop shadows and bevels. But in the past, when you went to move those into Adobe After Effects, several features were ignored or your composition would come in extremely complex with lots of layers and pre-comps and nesting. But now, things are significantly better. Let's see how. So what I've built here is a simple document that shows off all the different layer styles. And I've got things like basic drop shadows as well as drop shadows with custom bevels. If you're not familiar with that, if you come down and open up the drop shadow, you'll see that we have the ability to adjust its contour. And most people skip the contour setting, but this is really where quite a bit of power can be had, and you can greatly modify the shape of the bevel, or in this case, the drop shadow. Let's go ahead and click OK. Uh, you'll also see that we've taken advantage of features like adding noise here. So if we take a look at the drop shadow, you see that you can actually increase the amount of noise in the shadow and that can make it look a little bit dirtier or more organic. We've played with inner shadows and did double outer glows here. And again, that glow can have rings just by adjusting the contour settings. If you don't like the presets, just click and you can modify this contour setting manually. And as you make tweaks here, you see that that makes little changes to the curves. And if we click OK, you'll see that the rings can actually adjust on the fly, giving you a different look. We have other things in play here, including very complex bevels using inner and emboss, and taking advantage of gradients and textures. Remember, Photoshop has a wealth of texture libraries available. So if you need to, for example here with the pattern overlay, you could take advantage of any of these. This collection just came from down here in the rock patterns, and if we load those, you see we have several different options that we can choose from for that surface. So, lots of things to choose, and when you're ready, you just save that as a layered PSD file. Now, on top, I put a flattened copy, and the easiest way to do that is to choose Select All, and then Copy Merged, and Paste. And I just put that on top so I have some comparison of how it looked in Photoshop versus After Effects. Let's go ahead and close that, and we'll switch over to After Effects for a moment and just bring it in. Double click in the project window, and we can select the layered file, and I'll choose to import that as a composition. And we'll click Open. There we go. And if you look closely up here, we are seeing the merged copy. Let's just set that to 100%. There we go. And there's the merged copy. And here is what After Effects brought in. Notice only one layer style deviates, and that's just in the slightest bit. For some reason, when we use a texture pattern in our bevel, it does not translate exactly. But that's a small price to pay considering that all of these custom glows, shadows, bevels, gradients, and textures have come into After Effects flawlessly. Not only have they come in, but they're completely editable. So if we twirl this down here, you'll see that the layer style is actually added to the layer. So if I were to continue to go to stroke, I can further modify the size of the stroke, as well as change its color even after importing it into After Effects. It is a completely live effect. I'm going to go ahead and turn off Adaptive Resolution for a second, and let's take a look at one of the other more complex ones here, such as this pattern. And you'll see that it exists as a layer style. There's the pattern overlay. If I double click on it, there's the properties, and I have the ability to offset its texture. If I move the texture there and we let it redraw, you see that the pattern adjusts. So the texture can be repositioned as well as resized, which is incredibly flexible. 
again, everything comes through. So if you decide you want to adjust a gradient, change its color, if you'd like to change the shape of a bevel, it's simple. Simply select the layer and twirl it down until you see the layer styles property. There, you'll get a recreation of the dialog box from Adobe Photoshop. So you could change the bevel from say inner bevel to emboss. And if you'd like to change the shape of it, you could adjust size. And you can continue to modify things like the opacity and the color. This level of layer style support has long been a requested feature. And fortunately, both Adobe Photoshop and After Effects heard the call. With unparalleled integration, you can easily start your designs in Photoshop and move them to After Effects. Layer styles come in with all options and continue to be editable at your whim. With this tip on how to use Adobe Photoshop for video, I'm your host, Rich Harrington. I also invite you to check out the blog, photoshopforvideo.com, for extra information on broadcast graphics and techniques using Adobe software. Thanks again for joining us.